This video explains a pattern of first ionization energy as it go across period 3 from left to right. But what is first ionization energy? The exam definition is it's the energy required to remove one mole of the highest energy electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of one plus ions. But that's a bit of a mouthful. You can just think of it as the energy needed to remove the outer electron from an atom. So what factors affect the first ionization energy? Well, the first one is nuclear charge. The more protons in the nucleus, the greater the total positive charge of the nucleus, and the harder it is to remove electrons. Nuclear charge is sometimes given the symbol Z. It's the same as the atomic number. But it's the number of protons in the nucleus. The second factor is a distance between the nucleus and the electrons. Remember, the electrons are oppositely charged to the nucleus. The nucleus is positive, the electrons are negative. So they're attracted to the atom by the nucleus. And if we increase the distance between the electrons and that positive nucleus, we'll decrease the force of attraction and make it easier to remove them. Also, nuclear shielding of the inner electrons or the core electrons. The electrons below the outer electron can screen or block the positive charge of the nucleus a bit and make it slightly easier to remove the outer electrons. And the fourth factor is pairing. When we put two electrons into the same orbital, they're both negatively charged, they repel each other a little, and that can make it easier to remove one of the electrons. So what is the general trend or general pattern in first ionization energy in period three? Well, as we go from left to right across a period, the graph shows us in general there's an increase in first ionization energy. And we're going to try and explain this general trend firstly. So, in general, as you go across a period from left to right, the first ionization energy increases. Think about what we're doing to the atoms each time we move from left to right across this period. Each time we move from left to right, we're adding extra protons to the nucleus, but the electrons are being added to the same shell. So, as we move from left to right across a period, the nuclear charge is increasing which means there's a stronger attraction to the electrons, but the distance between the electrons and the nucleus is decreasing, so the electrons are pulled in a little bit. But this, the shielding is the same, the electrons are going into the same shell, and that means there's in total a stronger attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. We'll leave pairing for now, because that only has a very small effect. The second thing we need to do is have a look at the exceptions to this general pattern. So the general pattern is overall there's an increase from left to right across a period in first ionization energy. But chemistry is always concerned with looking at the exceptions and explaining those too. So have a look at the graph and can you spot the exceptions in the increasing pattern? The first one's aluminium. It drops a little bit from magnesium to aluminium. And also sulfur. It drops from phosphorus to sulfur. Everything else just increases. To explain these exceptions, we need to use the SPD model of atomic structure. So let's do an energy level diagram, 1s, 2s, 2p, and now we have three orbitals in the 2p subshell. And then we go up to 3s, where we have one orbital again, we'll show that as the line there. And then 3p, we've got three orbitals again, another p, or p subshell has three orbitals. So hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Each of these arrows represents electrons. And when we get to sodium, we add an extra electron into the 3s. Magnesium, another electron into the 3s. We've got a 3s shell full. And then when we start filling up the 3p subshell, it's higher in energy, and it's a little bit easier to remove an electron from that 3p subshell, which is why we see a small drop in ionization energy. The 3p subshell is just slightly further from the nucleus, and it's being shielded a bit by those 3s electrons, which is why we get that first drop. And then we go to silicon, phosphorus, and then we get another drop when we go to sulfur. Now, this, this time, when we go to sulfur, we've got to pair electrons into the 3p subshell, into that orbital. And the electron-electron repulsion, putting two negatively charged electrons in the same orbital, just decreases the ionization energy slightly. But then the pattern continues. We go add an extra electron for chlorine, and then finally for argon. So it's important to know the reasons for this general trend in ionization energy, but you also know, need to know and explain the reasons for these um, very important exceptions too.